Today we're making one of the most delicious French stews that you might not have heard of. It's called Coco Van. Here are all the ingredients. Let's get into it right now. Coco Van. Typically it's done with a rooster. We are not using a rooster today. We're gonna use regular chicken. I have four chicken thighs and about eight legs. Use about four pounds. That'll be a good amount for four to six people. You know, if you're like us, it's a good amount for four people, at least one thigh and one leg each. What we did is we trimmed the thighs. A lot of times when you buy thighs this way, it'll there'll be a ton of skin. They leave them overhanging that way so they can make more money. So I recommend you trim some of that skin. It was just too much in a lot of spaces on the thighs. And then the legs, because this was a pack, kind of the skin was pushed down in it. A lot of times people will make this dish with no skin at all. They'll remove it. You could even use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. There's a bunch of ways to go about doing this dish. We're gonna kind of do it towards the traditional way, though, again, we don't have a rooster. I poured one bottle of wine in here, dry red wine. Just use anything you want. This was a blend, and it just has to be dry. Chianti, Merlot, Cabernet, anything you want, about 10 or $12 bottle, and you'll be fine. Do not discard this wine. You really want to put it for 24 hours overnight, but I only did an hour now. It's going to give more flavor to the chicken. Okay, the other ingredients, we have a half a pound of bacon. I just cut the pieces fairly thick. I had one medium carrot, two celery ribs, and about one medium white or yellow onion is fine. You could even just put all this in a food processor to make it easier for yourself. This flour is just going to be used to dredge our chicken. So I have a half a cup. You don't have to get hung up on the exact amount. You just need a enough that you can dredge all those chicken pieces and adequately cover it. Garlic, I have five cloves minced. Got a bunch of thyme here, about 10 sprigs. We'll tie that up so it's easier to fish out at the end with our sauce. Three tablespoons of tomato paste. It's gonna give more body to our Coco Van sauce. We have two large bay leaves, one full cup of homemade chicken stock. Homemade chicken stock is important in this recipe and it smells so good, but there's no salt in homemade stock. Never make a homemade stock and put salt in it because you're kind of defeating the purpose of what you need this for. We're going to braise our chicken in four cups of red wine, which is one bottle and one cup of chicken stock. Again, no salt because at the end, after our chicken gets nice and tender, we're gonna power reduce everything, really concentrate it. If you have salt in this, even low sodium, it might be a little bit on the saltier side. So if that's the case and you're gonna use a boxed or better than bouillon stock, maybe take it easy on how much other salt you use on your chicken initially. A little bit of parsley at the end for garnish. So this is for the end. Now, you know, a lot of people took issue with me that I did my mushrooms and pearl onion separately in the beef bourguignon. That's kind of, you know, often how it's done. Traditionally, a French restaurant will do it that way for you. You don't have to do it that way. You can put all these in initially into the braise the whole time. I like to do it separately. I think it makes it a little nicer. So we have one pound of mushrooms, 16 pearl onions, about three tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil too and more thyme to really season them up nicely. This is an easy recipe. You just have to be prepared. You're gonna do your mise en place. If you're making a French recipe, you should be doing that. You really should be doing that on all your recipes. Let's get into searing our chicken right now. All right, we're gonna prep our chicken now. I just wanna show you, see that's spotty? What happens is when you're putting it in the wine, it will dye part of it, but not all parts of it. So that's what happens there. So I'm pulling them out of the wine and I need to save all the wine. The wine is our braising liquid. And this is very heavy on wine, this dish. This recipe, you really gotta use wine. All right, so I'm drying all these off for you and then we're gonna dredge them. I forgot to tell you on the ingredients, this is chocolate. It will give a super richness to the end. If you don't have it though, it's optional. So I'm gonna salt and pepper these up. I wanna do it fairly well. Like I said, if you're using the better than bouillon or a box stock, just, you know, maybe do a tiny bit less salt here, but chicken needs a lot of salt for it to taste good. Pepper too, both sides. All my wine, make sure you save it off to the side. This is a half a cup of flour. And then I have parchment paper lined baking sheet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna coat them all on all sides. And now I'm just gonna go like this and just kind of shake off all of that excess. This little bit of flour is gonna dry out the chicken more because it's spent all that time in the wine. It's gonna allow us to get a little bit better sear. And the flour itself is gonna help thicken our sauce just a bit. All right, let's do all of these. 
I'm using a 14 inch pan here. This isn't going to be what I use to braise the meat in. The reason I'm doing this is it's the same thing that I did in the pot roast. And honestly, I might start doing this in all dishes now. You're going to risk burning the pan when you're doing multiple batches of whether it's beef, chicken, whatever. It doesn't matter because we can still deglaze, sable our liquid, taste it. So what I'm doing is I'm heating this pan up to medium heat. I'm gonna braise it in this thing after. Now, on, this is a big deep one. A brazer, if you have an actual cast iron brazer, would be great too. Okay, so we're gonna put all of our bacon into this pan here. We're gonna let this cook until it gets crisp, probably about seven, 10 minutes. I'm on about medium heat. That's all you need to do. You don't need to be really high in incinerating your bacon or anything like that. So that's like two minutes. I just moved it around a little bit. Do that and then just spread it out and let it get cooked. What we're doing is we're getting the fat out of the bacon. That fat is what we're using to make our dish. Okay, so that bacon is good. Let's just spoon it out with a slotted spoon so we save our fat in here. And I'm just putting it on paper towel to drain a little bit. Okay, so we have a lot of fat in there. Let's get our chicken down. So here's our chicken from before because we already prepped it. And we're still gonna have to do two batches here. Back off the heat a little bit. So now I'm gonna go down to like a four or a three out of 10. And the reason I do it this way is because you can see the pan's getting black in there. So that's our fond, right? Our fond is developing and it might burn because this is only one batch and do a second batch. This is the single most important thing I can teach you about cooking on this channel. If you do it, and you set on one pot from the beginning, you're not giving yourself any insurance. Here you're giving yourself insurance. If it doesn't work, you know, you lost your fond and you can continue with your recipe though. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Tara, am I adequately explaining this, you know, or not? I think not? so, but I'm still reeling over the fact that you just used the F word, yeah. fond. Okay, so flip them over, that's how it looks, good. You know, this is gonna be your hottest spot right in the middle, so maybe for the outside ones, you know, move that one in the middle then. And we'll do this for about another three, four minutes on this side, then we'll do the second batch. Okay, I'm just gonna remove them right to the same parchment paper thing over here. Okay, pan's looking all right, and let's just get these in. You really wanna get color everywhere. Now, if you have a real stove set up, which I do over there, but you know, for a variety of reasons, I can't cook on it for you. You can already be starting your vegetables. Okay, I'm getting a little impatient, so I'm gonna do it. Now, I already put some fat in here. You can just go like this, kind of spoon it like this, right in. Okay, that's good. So listen, I got a couple tablespoons down there. Maybe I'll just put like a little bit more to give me a little bit more fat. I have it on medium heat here. And let's just cook this chicken until it's nice and brown and do our veggies. A little sprinkle of salt will help release that water a little quicker. We wanna get these vegetables really, really soft. Let them keep going, 10 minutes, eight, 10, 12, around there. Chicken, that's good. You turn this off for a second, move all the chicken. Okay. Now, here's our chicken. And here's our pan. Our pan, I can tell, I can smell. It's fine. If you aren't that experienced, then I would say do a tiny bit here and then taste it. Or if you got a cup, extra cup of stock, then you're fine as well. All right, let's put it in and then just turn up our heat. And then I can take my wooden spoon here, flat edge, and now I can scrape off the brown bits as this comes to a boil. So I'm essentially deglazing it with the stock. I will then, for double measure to check, I'll taste it and then I will pour it right back in here. And now I safely got my fond from here and then I'm able to, I know Tara's eyes are going up, you know? You know, I feel like I have to say it in, I'm, since I'm cooking these French recipes, like which it's, it's very important. But yeah, if your pan was black and you tried doing this, you're probably gonna ruin everything. So I'm gonna keep scraping this until I get the pan completely clean on the bottom, getting all of that flavor off the bottom of the pan. Let's give it a taste. Let's make sure that it's fine. Delicious. Completely clean. Turn it off. Let's just pour it back in here. Okay, I still have some stuff in that pan, so I'll try to get it out. And then there's our vegetables right here. They're very soft now. When I deglaze that there, if you had too much fat in the pan, you could pat a little bit off. Okay, I'm gonna put the garlic in here, let this cook for just about a minute or two to get fragrant. 
Okay, there's the tomato paste. If you feel like you're burning here, which looks like I possibly might, if you can see in there, I'm just gonna put a little bit of water to help me fry this out now. You could also use your red wine that you were gonna use in a second. All right, I just want this paste to cook for a couple minutes. Okay, so this is after about three minutes of cooking that paste, scraping off the sides, getting all the vegetables incorporated. Now we're gonna put in our stock, which is one cup of low sodium chicken stock or ideally homemade no sodium stock. And then here is all of the red wine that we marinated the chicken in. Two bay leaves, thyme that I tied. Turn the heat up to high right now. So now it came to a boil. I'm just gonna take my flat edge of my spoon right here and just scrape up any of those brown bits, but there admittedly isn't too many of them because that would be if we did the chicken in here, but we just did the vegetables and the tomato paste. All right, that's good. You can turn off the heat now. Here's the bacon. Okay, all well, that bacon, let's get it right back in there. Could you save crispy to the end? Of course you can, but that's not really what this type of dish is. This is very rustic, just everything goes in a pot. All right, so here's all that chicken. Gonna nestle it in there. Even if it's not submerged, it's still gonna braise, it's still gonna be fine. So what you need to do here is put your cover on, do a little wipe, get some of that fat, everything off the edges, and then 350 degree oven. You need enough room in your oven that you can accommodate this with the lid. 90 minutes, that's all you have to do. It's gonna be fall apart tender, delicious. So it's been like 30 minutes on the chicken. You can really do your mushrooms right after you put it in the oven, sit them over to the side because you, they'll just get warm again when you toss them with the sauce. I'm gonna do them now. I'm gonna heat my pan up to medium heat, maybe a touch higher than medium. All right, these are just frozen pearl onions that I have. I have 16 of them. You can drain them of the water. They've been out defrosting, but when they hit the hot pan, they'll evaporate more of the water. A little bit of oil, olive oil. Oh boy. We just wanna get a little bit of color on these. These onions, they're done, they're completely done. Okay, I'm just gonna put them right back in. And our mushrooms. We want these to release their water. They'll start releasing it, it'll evaporate, they'll start browning. It's very easy to cook mushrooms. Now they release their water and now I have the heat back down to about a five. Back it off a touch. And then here is the butter and the pearl onions can be added back in. It's gonna glisten these up right now. Let them brown a little bit more. I have thyme here, so the recipe says two teaspoons of thyme, but use what you like. Salt, pepper. Okay, it's been not even 90 minutes, probably like 80 minutes. The chicken is super tender, but our sauce is going to be too thin here, so Remove our chicken. You can also remove your bay leaves uh, in a sec and your thyme. But yeah, gently remove your chicken. Some of it, especially the legs, are gonna wanna fall apart like that. Okay, and I'm just gonna put them right here on this platter. Just kinda drain it as much as you can. Let's pull them all out of here. So chicken is super tender, maybe touch too tender, but that's how it looks. Just take foil and cover it so it stays relatively warm and our sauce is very thin. You can just use sauce like this. You can also leave all the fat that's in here or you could degrease it. I always like to show the simplest way, which is just a paper towel. The fat will rise to the top within a few minutes and then you can just do this and it'll all adhere to it. Just put it up like this, okay, right there. Okay, boom, that is all fat. Okay, right there, there's one. And let's just do one more. Jim, you're taking all the fat away. No, I'm not. There's plenty of fat still left in here, okay? We want to reduce this, but we don't have to. This is the consistency right now that we have. Fairly thin. Let's taste it. Oh, the flavor is amazing. We're going to concentrate it and make it better than amazing. We're going to turn it up to about medium high here. And we're going to let this come up to essentially a boil. Okay, it's boiling. You can take your spoon right here. You can measure your spoon like this. Put it in just like this initially. That's how much we have, we want to get it to half of that, to reduce by half. When it does reduce, it's going to get a lot thicker. It's going to more coat the spoon. It's going to stick to our chicken in a delicious way. You're still going to, even after that reduction, you're still going to be left with a couple cups of sauce, which is plenty. Every so often, make sure you're stirring it here so you don't burn all that work you put into it. So I did about six minutes. I think that's good. I'm going to lower my heat now. It's getting a little salty because of all the bacon that's in here, even with no salt in the stock. and just salt on the chicken. Still think it tastes delicious. If you were worried about salt, maybe you could back off to a quarter pound of bacon, but I still think it's good right now. I'm gonna put in a lot of pepper. 
no salt, obviously. And we're gonna put in our secret weapon here, our chocolate. This is 70%, so I'm gonna start with one. So this is right here, I have one ounce. So I'm starting with a half an ounce. I'm just gonna start with a half an ounce, see how it tastes, and I recommend you do this, and then you can go up to an ounce. I mean, honestly, you could go even more if you want. It's just gonna add to that richness. Turning it very low to taste this. Let's see the consistency of that. We're gonna only do a half an ounce. I'm glad that I didn't put it all in, but I was testing it here today. A half an ounce is perfect amount. Okay, so here's our mushrooms from before. Now, you can mix your mushrooms and your on onions in there, or you can serve them on the side. I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna mix part of them in there. And you know what, let's mix them all in today. James, it's cool now. There's a leg and a thigh for you. So I gave you some sauce, some mushrooms, the chicken, chicken leg. So what do you think? You just had it the other night. I wanna try the leg. I mean, you could just, with the leg, you could just eat it with your hands. I like the leg more than the thigh. More than the thigh? Yeah. I just feel like the, like the skin is better on the leg. The skin with this dish, a lot of recipes will, they'll remove the skin completely. Just because it's under liquid the whole time. I just ate this. That you don't wanna eat. But a lot of them will do it. It'll make it a little less greasy. I like it. I think it's good. I think it's very rustic. Let me just try the sauce plain. Yeah, though. mushrooms, bacon. Very good. So give us your thoughts. You don't like the thigh as much as the leg. Yeah. You could do this recipe all with legs. I really like the sauce by itself. I think that's gonna go on anything. I think it's a little salty. Do you think it's a little too salty? No? I'm gonna disagree with him here and say it is a little salty, so I'm gonna change this recipe from a half a pound of bacon to a quarter pound of bacon. You gotta be careful with seasoning your chicken. You probably don't wanna go overboard. No salt stock if you can, and then be careful with the bacon. These French recipes can be a little complicated with this because you're always like reducing at the end. You know, that salt on your chicken, that is going into your sauce. So you might have to be a little bit more uh, prudent initially. Can you taste the secret ingredient I added this time versus last time? It's in the sauce. It turned the sauce a little bit darker color. I don't know, I, like yeah. I, ta I can taste it. I just don't know what it is. I think a half an ounce is a perfect amount. Like you can tell it, it increases richness, but it's hard to tell what it is. What is it? Chocolate. It's chocolate. Yeah. Now that you know it was chocolate, can you taste it? Does it make sense now? Yeah. Okay, so what does it get, James? I'm gonna give this a nine. A nine? I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Thanks, James. We'll see you next time. All right, now you can have the chocolate. <laughs>